Welcome. Hey, Steve. Good. Uh, I know that um, Steve Habitrop can't make it tonight, oh, and it's him as well. And Jake is not here tonight. Jake is not here. Okay, gotcha. All right. So we have a form so we can proceed. Um, welcome, everybody, to the Parks and Rec Commission meeting on uh, Wednesday, June 14th. We'll start with roll call. Keith Ritchie, George Bennington. Francesca Segala, Sue Leone. Hey, great. Gene Goodman. Doug Murphy. Thank you, guys. Uh, first order of business is to approve the minutes on our May 10th, 2023 meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Thank you, Doug. Second, Francesca. All those in favor? Opposed? No carries. Uh, next order of business is the Garden Club's yearly report. Uh, we welcome you all. Thank you. Okay. This is our, just stand up and stand up. Can we just, do you want to go here? Yeah. Wherever you like. Okay, well, we'll just yeah. sit right here. There's people, uh, no, I'm just going to get on the team. So feel free to kind of move around. If people were on there, then you'd have to kind of come towards the center so they could hear you. Okay. But since there's nobody else on, feel free to, you know. Okay. okay. Be in there. All right. Well, we have to the mic's over there. The mic's, oh, the mic's over there. Can you, so, you think you can stand good. there? I'm good. No, you're good right there. All right. So we appreciate the opportunity to come before the commission and update you on our projects at both Waveney and Irwin. Um, I'm going to tell you about what we've been doing in Irwin. Uh, this past year, we planted another 1,500 uh, daffodil bulbs. And as I think you all hopefully saw, we had quite a show in the spring. Um, we also planted 28 native plant wildflowers in late May in the area of the gazebo down in the back of the park. Where the goats have been. Where yeah. the goats have been. Um, our hope is that these native plants will eventually naturalize the area and prevent some of the invasives that we know we have a huge problem with uh, from prolific uh, Watering these new plants plus the nine trees that we planted last year uh, is key. And we are recruiting volunteers within our club to over the summer come and water the plants. Um, we've appreciated the spigot that's nearby that the town put in for us because it makes it a lot easier. Um, but there are a lot of weeds and it's hard to get to some of the stuff. So we're wondering if there's any mowing schedule to get us in there a little bit better. Um, it's pretty hard. It's full of poison ivy and it's just, I, one of our chairs went and did it the other day and said it took her two hours. Just to even get in there. Get in there and get through all of it. And we're also sort of, I think whoever gets there to weed whack or mow, we might want to meet you there so we can make sure you know where the bushes are because these are plants. The not, new stuff. They're not all big. And so I think we, we should do that beforehand, before we right? go there with a the mower, maybe put some yeah. stakes in. Well, I think I've done, we've done some stakes. I'm not sure of all of them, but there are 28 and they're all different kinds of native plants. They're not, they're flowering. There's also just bushing type ones. So it would be very easy to mow over. Once they're established, that's not a problem. They'll come back, but they're not established yet. I can tell you, it won't be able to happen before July 4th. Yes, well, you, you think you've got a little busy time on July 4th? Just a little bit okay. busy. For <laughs> <laughs> um, if we did notice that some of the knotweed looked like it had been hit by something toxic, and we were wondering what that was. Um, it, went, it wasn't toxic. I've yeah. seen that in other places in the state, too, here and there. I think it might have been weather related because it all seems to have come back now. Well, it was just the top, awesome. the top on several parts of yeah. it of the fairly mature knotweed uh, at that point, which is unfortunate that it's so mature. Um, but so we weren't sure what had happened. And we I'm were, not sure either. Okay. 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 All right. Well, that's. But I've so, seen it more than just in Irwin. I've seen it. In other and it times. wasn't on every. It wasn't on every one. It was just on a few. Okay. And we would love to work with the town to find a way to deal with these invasives because they are beyond what we can do as a club. I mean, we've tried, obviously, goats, coffee. I mean, we've tried multiple things, and they just are invasive and pervasive. So um, the coffee actually was quite effective, but interesting. It was, but it was tedious, very tedious. <laughs> um, so we hope you are all aware, and some of you are maybe newer to the commission, that um, last year we uh, it engaged Stimson Associates to help us with a long range plan for Irwin. Um, the town uh, approved $175,000 to do a boardwalk sort of in the area, just, um, I guess it's 
east of the uh, where the goats were that would sort of wander through the woods and also to do a, um, a sort of a terrace, terraced area but between the pool house and the house. Um, we were told that that has been put on hold because of the project at uh, Dunning. So we're hoping that maybe that will start up again um, as we go forward. Yeah, one of our issues is that we know the town has put aside $175,000 for this boardwalk um, or approved, and we know it's going to cost more than that. So we know we need to contribute something to that. And so trying to get those numbers so that we can fundraise for it and it's not like a city in our coffers. <laughs> we need to go somewhere. So uh, we just want to, if we can get that, some more ideas about what's happening with that, um, that would be really great. So that's Erwin. And Debbie's going to talk about Waveney. Waveney. So um, we've had a, a, a long relationship uh, working um, in Waveney uh, with the gardens. And I, again, many of you may know this, many of you may not, but in 1994, 95, our then, our then um, and see president, what it looked like when it, when the garden club sort of got. <laughs> President uh, Alice Parker saw the falling apart walls in the wall garden, truly falling down, crumbling down, and said, we've got to fix this. And so the garden club undertook a huge campaign to not only fundraise, but also to get the contractors and work with the town and made that wall garden what it is today. And it really is magnificent and beautiful. If you haven't been in there recently, I highly recommend going in there. It's just a, a beautiful garden um, to be in. And we have a lot of members of um, our community that go in there for reflection and contemplative time and quiet time and solace. So it's a really important aspect. And then the Garden Club also renovated the Peony Walk, which is up that leads to the Belvedere in 2015. That had a beautiful showing this spring with the Peonies in bloom. And then in 2018, we renovated the Parterre Garden, which is one closest to the house. Um, and uh, so those are the projects that we've undertaken there, which have been significant with the um, gardens. We really want to thank the town and the Conservancy. Um, we did contribute a little bit to the restoration of the roots in the World Garden. They look great and they just came out beautifully and they were falling apart and tiles were slipping and truly we were afraid the tiles were going to fall down on some lovely bride's head at some point that was standing there. So it does with a really beautiful um, addition. Uh, we still have um, a project there to do, which is the wood railings on top of all the walls need to be power washed and the finials on top of each post need to be replaced. And we did put Tiger in touch with Boston Attorney Works, which is in Providence, which is the company that did the finials at first. We sent a finial to them because they didn't have the dimensions or what we actually had got. So we're not sure where that project is and where we are. And if we can help in some way where maybe we need to purchase them because it's, we don't know if they've this company's become uh, part of the town's merchants or whatever. So, you know, we, we're happy to do it, but we do want to get those replaced and, and tidy up that area of the garden. Um, we also just want to say again, thank you for allowing us to showcase those gardens in our um, most recent uh, garden tour we just had last Thursday, which was very successful. Um, really uh, ended up being a decent day with the orange sky disappearing a little bit from the day before, which was thankful. Uh, but it was, um, we had four of our members' gardens on it and then the Waveney Gardens. And um, it was um, just every, the, the exclamation points from everybody were just, this was so beautiful and this was so great. Thank you. So thank you for allowing us to do that. Uh, obviously, we maintain the gardens during the growing season, weekly you know, weeding. We've got a crew in there every week. Um, in the mornings, either Thursdays or Fridays, uh, working away. Uh, we planted 150 daffodils and crocus on the side of the hill that is on the other side of the um, knockout rose hedge that kind of goes down towards the pond. Uh, that was beautiful this spring. And we also just recently redesigned the southeast corner in the park, which just needed some TLC. And we pulled out the bed and put in some beautiful new plants. Um, that looks great. Um, and we got the garden professionally edged, which we'd love to be able to have that something we work with the town with again on keeping that up because it, it, the, all the grass was going up over the bricks that are in the garden. So it looks beautiful. It looks like, yeah. My uh, husband tried to do it for us and he was like, I can't talk. I mean, it's like, <laughs> he stood up, but yeah, yeah, it was about it. But it looks great. Yeah. Uh, so we did pay someone to come in and do that. Um, and then we also remember, may remember that last year we uh, replanted that. Uh, parking circle that, or planted that parking circle, so there was nothing in it uh, that um, is there um, in right sort of above the powerhouse theater or whatever. And it's um, got a tree and, it, it, and we replaced the, um, the guara, which is the whirling butterfly that's in the middle because they 
there's they're very um, sensitive plants and they did not make it through the winter. So we replaced those this um, this spring and um, the Nepeta is doing very well. And then we also want to thank the town for moving the faucet because that is incredibly helpful. You would know the faucet had been where you had a literally played at the Africa goat on the hill on the other side of the hedge, the rose hedge. You go turn on the faucet to water any plants, and we got to move where you can just actually go right up. Like, oh, civilized person. Here, no? I mean, yeah. It was really <laughs> lovely. I used it the other day. I was like, this is fantastic. Um, and uh, there's some improvements we need. Uh, some irrigation that's planted on the southeast corner, and we need to straighten the bent metal edging on the southeast entrance that we can't do. And I don't know how, maybe John, we can meet Irrigation there. Stuff. Irrigation stuff, fabulous. Thank you so much. I didn't want to tell you we were doing it the Monday before your tour. We, oh, we, I mean, <laughs> we didn't notice, okay? We were like... No, we had, we had all sorts of things happening on that week, okay? Don't worry. We had lots of changes. That's happening. awesome. Thank um, you. It was fine. But um, but there is metal edging as you come in that south end inch that we can't... I don't even know if it can be straightened, but you can take a look and see how we can... We can't do it. Um, there's still a drainage issue at the bottom of the stairs. And you know that probably. Uh, some of the bricks are out of alignment and we still want to work on how we can repair those trellises um, that are on by the side of tea houses and things like that. But I think we did successfully get rid of the groundhog. So I think that's a, that was the good news. Um, and finally, there's just, um, well not finally, we've got a, a plan in place to replace the benches that are done by original plans. Um, and so we're working on that. And then um, we, desperately need some place if we can ever find it for storing some of our UTEP things that we have, our stakes, and they're all neatly stacked behind the boxwood bushes, the side of the tea house. But if we had some place where we could put them, it would be great. And whether it's downstairs underneath that, whether the suitors can become that black box suitor or whatever it's going to happen there, somewhere would be great. That would be fabulous. But that's it. And thank you. Yeah, we're really grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had a question. Um, in terms of the boardwalk at Irwin, have you spoken to some of the neighbors? It's neighbors that have very close property lines to that. Yes, and uh, I would say 100% are. Yeah, they're in favor of it. Yeah, I mean, okay. The few that I've spoken to, just they don't, they love having the people. It's a, it's a quiet, contemplative activity. Um, right. And so it doesn't um, cause a problem with the covenants that they had about not wanting noise and things like it's, it's only during the day and it's right so sure. we've, I, we've only gotten positive um okay. feedback you'll see actually some of the neighbors have made pathways over to Irwin to get their property so uh so yeah no and we did meet with all of them and made sure and, the, and even when we had the goats in there we met the property that a bus says the park so we met with them and they were favorably you know gotcha. I miss the goats, by the way. I know. I know everyone does. I know we do. But the nature center is getting some goats, so you can go get your fix over there. So okay. Yeah, they're going to have that same thing. Yeah. Too. Okay. Are there any other questions from this commission? Yeah, great work. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And thank you for the phenomenal job. You know, I heard the garden tour was a great success. It was a great success. Yeah. We, we were very lucky. Really yeah. So it went, went off without a hitch, which was kind of amazing. By the end of the day, I said, like, there wasn't a phone call. How did that happen? <laughs> With all the smoke. Too. Yeah, even the yeah. smoke. I mean, we only got like a couple yeah. people that said, you know, can I have my money back? We had right. some emails the night before we were dealing with, right. but it was okay. Yeah. And, you know, and we just left it as a personal decision, which is like yeah, amazing. Right? Right. Exactly. So, um, but we had we had probably 450 to 475 people come. Wow. And we could have had more. None of the uh, gardens. We were we capped it at 500 because we were afraid. We, we didn't want it to be too that, crowded, and sure. um, we, but it was it was our first uh, time out of the gate, so okay. we'll um, hopefully grow and learn. Yeah, so forward, yeah. we'll be yeah. up. What are the signs in my garage? Are you in uh, <laughs> yeah. the bamboo boots? I know I have those for a while too. Yeah. Um, and George's and wife was our well, our signage chair. Yeah. 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 It was a, it was a, that was a powerful committee. We yeah. really didn't want to. Maybe we should put too many good else. people in that <laughs> committee. I don't know. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
was, I was going to dress up for your people, but I just spent all the other about 20 minutes trying to get the water away from the front door so, to get out of the theater. <laughs> anyway, I'm Deborah Burke. I'm at the Powerhouse Theater. And I um, want to thank George for allowing me to come in here at the very last second. Um, we were lucky enough, we, we started a live at the Powerhouse Theater um, new program last, we tried to do it right at the end of COVID, we couldn't do it, we smashed one in at the end of December, but we were hoping to do um, maybe two or three programs per year with a lot of the Powerhouse. And we're working with a gentleman who grew up in New Canaan, Johnny Reed, and he runs uh, JRNY Entertainment. And he is the one who is allowing us access to some great performers. He called me two days ago and said, hey, I got this wonderful uh, artist, Dexter Allen, it's on the second page here. And he's got one day available between his tour dates between Rhode Island and Maine and a few other places uh, scheduled and wondered if we could bring him into the powerhouse on the day of Thursday, August 10th, um, which we would love to do. Normally for the last show, we did everything indoors at the theater and uh, it was a decent success, but we could have done more. Um, again, it was COVID issued. And for this one, we were hoping to, which is why I'm here, um, open our barn doors at the back of the theater and allow the music to spill out to the park. And um, we also were talking about bringing in food trucks. I didn't know until this morning, <laughs> as I knew like this, uh, when we got on, when we were talking to the Special Events Commission and uh, committee, and they informed me that money can't change hands in the park. You can't have a food truck and, and uh, buy food there. So we might have to rethink what we're talking about with a food truck um, because this would have been a free, this is a free event. So uh, there was opportunities there to pre-buy a box food from uh, the food trucks and just hand them out at the show. We realized that the date of Thursday, August 10th is a little problematic if there's a rain date for the summer concert series in the park. Um, this would have been the rain date that we were asking for. So if the worst comes to worst and you guys need the rain date in the park, we would then just do our music series indoors at the theater, close the doors and just have a regular concert series inside. Um, so the, what we're proposing and what we're asking for is one, allowing us to have music in the park. Uh, on that Thursday, and possibly too allowing us to either close off a portion, a portion of the road in front of our building or the parking lot to the left um, to a couple food trucks, no more than a couple. We talked to a, a friend of Johnny Reed's that is um, all at uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. I know they have a truck and it's pre-approved in New Canaan. So that would probably be who we'd be talking to for a food truck. And then perhaps a secondary truck. I'd have to get the pre-approved list of all the vendors um, for like ice cream or something. And then even if it is a rain date and you still have music in the park and we could still have our music indoors, it would still be a lovely festive atmosphere because it, again, ours is a free event. People can come and go. It would not be a closed event. The doors can... You know, people can wander over if they want to, because uh, you have music from the 70s that night. So we could wander over to the Mississippi Blues to also hear some other kinds of music the same night, if, if in the case, it, if both are the same night. It's in the food trucks. Um, obviously, that can be a big stumbling block. Yeah, yes. and it may be. And that could be our just our secondary wish list. And we don't have to do that. Yeah, right, right now, we want to understand. For us to vote us with the food trucks, it would probably have to be digested a little bit more by special events embedded. Yeah. Okay. If they remove the food trucks, potentially, you know, the worst part is, you know, two people show up at a at a time, two hundred people, you know, it's another hundred cars mm -hmm. for the night of the concert. If it's postponed. if it's the same night, 
Notice Paul Steve is hoping that every concert goes off on Wednesday. No questions asked. Nice right. easy. Find it. Yeah. So. Can I ask this? This uh, I, the special event said money cannot change in in the park. You cannot sell in the parks. That's a town ordinance. Okay. Well, uh, every Fourth of July, we're going to yeah. exchange yeah. up uh, booth, and we have exchanged tons of money yeah. to yeah. set our yeah. town and that gives special that gets... approval for that. Okay, so special approval on those events. It has to go through. It has to go through the board of selectmen and food trucks or, or and selling in general. Is fine. Okay, I'm learning all this too. And another another thing, um, another group I'm in has a barbecue lunch at Waverly, and we bring our own barbecue and we barbecue hamburgers and hot dogs. So. Which is not expensive if you buy a bunch of frozen hamburgers and hot dogs. Mm -hmm. um, just throwing that out there that you would need a food truck. You just you just get a barbecue. You need health inspections up. Yeah, your your friend might be canceled from now on. Health inspections. You might open your mouth. That was. I mean, originally that was the proposal to just do that, and I I figured there were some issues yeah, there. Salute what you're doing. I think you know, obviously this continues to bring value to the town, which is terrific. Obviously, there's a few details that you need to work out. I think, um, you know, I think we're supportive, okay? Right to, for us to take a vote tonight without all the details laid out would be tricky, okay? Would, since it's going to be on August 10th, our next meeting is on July 12th. That's fine. Could you kind of, can I put you on the July 12th Absolutely. meeting and then come back to us with if you need food trucks to get the, the special approval? If you don't, if you have something else, in mind, let us know about that. We obviously would like to be supportive, but without particularly the special events didn't know about this until a couple weeks before the meeting. Exactly. So we, we that's fine. If, if even if we could make it, the board selection could override it, and that's what we don't. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a question. Do you know about any how many people do you think it would draw? Well, we don't because we've not done it yes. before. Um, and the only other show we have is live in the powerhouse. Um, it was COVID, so we got maybe 50 people. But does he have a drawing? Um, I mean, maybe he has probably not in the area, but I mean, he's he's got a great tour, so we have to do some work and promote that. But you know, it's obviously a great band. So, um, but if there's a rain day, we only have 120 theater seats, 115 to 120 seats in the theater. So that would be our that would probably be what what we'd be looking for because. If we have to close the doors, then we're stuck with only the seat numbers that we have. Although, again, if it's an open door, people can wander in and out. You know, there might be people, if again, it's that night, there'll be people wandering maybe from the other concert to our concert. So um, we're, we're not quite sure how many people will, will show up. Sure. So, what other questions? So, if I ask a question? Please. Um, what time are you planning on having? It's, oh, we had from clock to nine. So I was thinking our start at 7.30. Right. So what if you did six to 7.30 and then close doors and head on over to ours if it happens? If this happens. way that would, you know, alleviate some problems of them both going on at the same time. Um, or five to seven. So yeah. Like yeah, I mean, we can move forward. You're the guy? Are you the guy? <laughs> yeah, it's something to look at. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this way, I, as I said, overlap. Yeah. We uh, it, this was again just thrown at me two days ago, so then I threw it back at George. So um, yeah, we're in our early stages of figuring this all out, but I do yeah. want to at least broach the subject to make sure it is uh, something that is is acceptable to the board and um, well we can't vote on it. Joint, I realize that. I love that. There you go. Right. Well, I'll give you my card if you want, George, and we can sit down and go through a lot of these little details. That would be lovely. Okay. Because again, I'm learning myself. So sure. Okay. No. Well, we want to be supportive, but we have to make sure teach across and eyes are dotted when we come for a formal vote. Right. So uh, from my end, um, I'm gonna proceed with the uh, entertainment group just to say it's possible and to make sure that I've got all their, their information that I need for you guys. And we obviously wouldn't do anything going with the ear purple. Right. 
Thank you. Okay. I'll put you as first on the agenda too. So, you know, if you don't have to come here month after month after month. Okay. Okay. And if there's any specific questions that you need me to answer, if you could email me um, to so I know what to sure. what to bring the next meeting that would be great. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next is the uh, Tim evening pool update. Yeah. So the Banco pool open on Memorial Day weekend, and it's open through <laughs> Labor Day weekend. The current hours, based on the information I've got, is that it is the same for weekends and weekdays at this point. So it's the, the pool is open from 11 a.m. to 7:30 p.m. Um, weekdays and weekends, although they're kiddie pool hours, which is interesting, are open earlier on weekdays from 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. This is from June 19th to August 25th. And it, during weekends, the kiddie pool hours, which I've used my family, is open from at 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Um, on weekends from June 5th to August 27th. But I also have um, membership sales Data and this is literally these are annual sales, uh, right? John, sales today, which yeah, through last, this is last Thursday. from from sales from April 5th, so about two months from April 5th this year through June 6th, uh, is what, is what I've got. And there are 915 overall sales, 533 of them are residents, resident family sales. There are 101 non-resident sales. Those are all non-resident families. And again, all together, it's 915. That's through June 6th, which I'm guessing is probably tripled up. <laughs> and if, if the weather gets warmer, we'll have, we'll have more. Right. Yeah, school's out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When people start thinking about it. So. Yeah. Uh, and then the last that I just had is a little bit on the, the different teams. The swimming team had 43 signed up. As of June 6, dive team 12 registrants and water polo is 23 as of June 6. But overall, sounds good. What's what your question? questions for him? I do have one. Um, it opens at 11. Is what the swing teams are taking over the pool before that? Correct. Okay. Swing team starts at 8 o'clock and the Y has it from 5 45 to 8 o'clock in the morning, Monday through Friday. Okay. Wow. You can go to the kiddie pool at 9 a.m. Okay. Good. Right. Thank you. Let me see. Any other questions? Tim? Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Moving on. Um, Francesca and Keith, the tennis and pickle update. Do <clears throat> I start with me? Do you need to want it? Sure. Yeah. So um, you also have these uh, handout. So for tennis passes at Mead Park, uh, and these were the latest figures as of a days ago 153 total adult passes, of which 141 were resident, and, and uh, uh, that's pickle. Uh, I'm doing, yeah, just that's okay. I can do it. Want me to flip the pickle first? Uh, that's just what we started. I did that. We were PowerPoint started. No, yeah, it started with tennis. I always start with that as a pickle here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I guess we're in a pickle. Okay. Well, you know, we can go back. So, we can, okay, I can. Okay, there we are. 153 total adult passes, 141 residents, well, non residents. Uh, seniors, 92 total, of which I'm one. 86 residents, of which I'm one. Uh, six non residents. And then youth, 50 passes total, and they're all residents. So, we're seeing a high level of usage. Uh, we spoke to Shane, who uh, is the uh, chief trainer, and he said that the numbers are really good. There were some website issues early on, but they've all been corrected. He has four core tennis trainers and six part-time trainers, and all that's going well. Uh, John tells us, maybe he'll amplify, that there are four new LED light fixtures that will go live in July. Actually, eight fixtures. Eight fixtures. But for the, for the two lower courts. Right. And then uh, regarding the apple cart, they seem to be doing excellent business every time I'm around. And I'm told a new awning will be installed. Um, 
and the awning will be very secure so that uh, the concern would be there's some pretty heavy winds that run through there every now and then. Um, but that would be a big improvement over the umbrellas that are now, which frequently do get blown up by these winds and broken. Well, the umbrellas will be there anyway. It's well, just protecting people from yeah. rain and rain. Yeah. Sun. Rain and sun. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's a plan to redo the tennis courts. Okay. You want to add anything? Resurface them. To that? Okay. Then we'll move on to pickle. Or should I say move back to pickle? Um, similar numbers for the pickle passes adults 152 total. But this time they're all residents. Seniors again at 91, all residents, youth 19, all residents. They're experiencing a very high level of usage as this photo taken a couple of days ago illustrates. Um, and they're going to have a plaza with a slate floor added with chairs and tables, which uh, is really getting a lot of favorable press. Any questions? Is, is the numbers of adults and seniors are so similar? Is there a large overlap of we, or is it just pure there's a, we tend to think there's a big overlap, but the one thing that takes away from that is well, the 141 resident for the case of tennis and 152 in the case of pickle. So, but probably those 141 also the tennis players they also have pickle packs. I know a number of them at least that play both. And there's, there's one right here. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so with that, we will go on to the mill plan update. And Chad, no, 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 I'm sorry. Go on, sorry. Go on. Okay. All right. So Kiwanis, uh, we walked through it. Um, it has Camp White which we heard about from the wide and we came and reported. We weren't going to reiterate what they gave us. Uh, Girl Scouts are there, library has programs there, and then it's a uh, beach swim and a playground for uh, residents. Um, the improvements that have happened since uh, in, in the past couple of years, planted trees in the entry island are all thriving. There were some that were dead, they were being planted, and uh, they're all doing well. Um, the new fence around the playground uh, is working beautifully as the gates open and close. Um, we cleared overgrowth outside the fence and that is still cleared except for one spot where there's um, uh, drainage uh, um, grill in the ground across from the uh, Waikiki Pavilion where they have lunch uh, and that needs to be cut down. We talked to John about it and you're gonna take care of it, right John? Check it out. I didn't get a chance to okay. look at it. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. All right. And then uh, the increased sand on the north side um, has given more um, beach access to the residents because the wide camp uses all of the other side and also kind of the right side. They, they use maybe a third of the lake, wouldn't you say? Something like that. Then um, the trailways through the woods. Uh, have been maintained and are in good shape. Um, we just had a couple of suggestions with that, which we'll all come down to. This, um, the caretaker house, there were complaints last year about uh, a lot of garbage around it and the fence falling down. The fence is uh, in good shape now. And we just saw that there was a uh, rule of chain link fence on the ground that we told John about, and he's going to check into that too. Um, uh, John told us that the parking area for Kiwanis is going to have uh, painted lines. The asphalt already has painted lines. We're going to put some temporary lines down to just try to alleviate some of the parent drop off and pick up for the line. Yeah, it could be mayhem when there are a lot of people there. So and, and even when the cops are trying to direct traffic, so the lines will really help. Um, and uh, the, the neighbors cutting through are allowed to, that that all came through. Um, so in the budget, we um, suggest that the keys patrol come through because there was lots of keys poo in the sand. And John says that's gonna come back up. Um, 
repair the surface of the basketball court because it is really in poor shape, continues to be. We reported on this every year. And so we'd like to get in the budget getting that resurfaced. Um, as well as the benches that are 20 plus years old and you've been painting for us, thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, hope, hopefully they can be uh, removed and replaced. Um, then the, we have one water fountain that says it has a water bottle fill. Is that true? It's in the alleyway where you um, show your paths to go in, where the gate is. On the right side, there are two water fountains, and one of them has the ability to fill a water bottle. Yeah, it's, okay. it should be there and I'll be working. Yep. Um, it doesn't have the front panel on it. I'm going to be fixed it today. It, it, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, great. It will be all set for opening on Saturday. Okay, great. And that was the other thing. It's opening on Saturday. Um, food, we have run into um, a roadblock with getting food happening there. So uh, Keith and I and John, we were thinking. What about vending machines? Maybe we put some vending machines in there for as a temporary fix, but people really need to be able to get drinks, state mm -hmm. water, um, and uh, and snacks. We will have to go through the same um, you said it, But I think it should be discussed. I wanted to bring it up. Oh, yeah. 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 Because the idea is if we could get what I would call a Coke type vending machine. Where you could have water or Gatorade or other healthy drinks and maybe a Coke. Um, that would satisfy most people's desire to have a drink, but they didn't bring enough. Mm -hmm. And then if you have another vending machine, which has granola bars and those crackers with the peanut butter right. and, and things you know, like that, we're talking about healthy stuff in the long life, then you can satisfy again most people's requirements for food that they, you know, beyond what they it's could time. maybe should have bought themselves. So if you just have these two vending machines there, I mean, we could probably knock off 80% of people's requirements for drinks and food. These vending machines would obviously be temporary. I mean, those would yeah. be pulled out. You wouldn't want them in there. And put, well, you know, I think it depends on how the disease is so set up. If, if you get a private party who will set up the vending machine, and I don't know what the rules are, then I guess it would be up to them if they want to leave it there all year long. Um, if it's the municipal, then yeah, we have to do whatever's sensible. Yeah. Maybe pull it up. We need to do some research. Yeah, you know, okay. the commission likes the idea. You know, yeah. I like it because we, we've tried the last few years, and it's been very difficult to get food trucks to get people. I know Steve has, you know, done you know yeoman's duty in trying to to, to locate that. Every time somebody gets close, from one reason, reason or another, and you have any comments, comments she's made over the years there. So I think this is a as as good an alternative as we can get. Right. And I think even during the winter when we're out there selling Christmas trees, there'd be a certain market to oh, yeah. buy drinks and, and and snacks from from the like four or five thousand people that go through there to buy the Christmas trees. Right. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. It'd be outside though. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be outside, but they could be uh, under the pavilion, you know, in the, in yeah. the either along some, you know, there's a number of places in plenty of buildings sure. in the pavilion with plugs, you know, for electric power. So maybe why not? You know, not exchange may need those because the tables so the reuse and we need a lot of those power. Yeah. So we can kind of work with this. Okay. If we had to. I know you could. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe but it's something be less than things. Oh, oh, you know, go ahead. Okay. Um the sidewalk that was added to the old Norwalk Road is great, but there's no walking path down to the park from the sidewalk. So we thought that all along the, um, what is that, the west side of the entry road, there was a stone dust path um, from the sidewalk down to like the uh, Girl Scouts house. That would um, be helpful. It would also help delineate where you could be mowing the lawn and keeping it uh, um, from overgrowth. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we wanted to suggest doing that and putting that money in the budget, asking for that money. Um, there are also two trees that are in the uh, around the <coughs> entrance, kind of close to the nursery school uh, area too, covered in 
poison ivy. So either we remove the poison ivy or we remove the trees completely, but they're, they're deemed. Okay. And we um, look at it before I say yay or nay, and it would also will be the tree warden's ultimate decision and their needs to address. We have a small difference. Uh, I'd say keep the trees, but get rid of the poison ivy. Um, and I think you would just yeah, well, the one, one of the trees is leading into the road, mm -hmm. and, and a quarter of it is chopped out for trucks to pass anyway. So that I thought that tree might as well go. And it's bridging the path anyway. There is no, uh, it, it's it kind, of, kind of an unsightly tree anyway. Okay, so that's that. Thank you. Excellent report. We appreciate it. And uh, I know we kind of jumped here with the <clears throat> Mill Pond update. Um, Francesca, hey, you're, you're the wrong side, Francesca. <laughs> We're going to let Hank do that, but I will okay. interject this yes, every evening. Thank you. Uh, Francesca and, and I visited uh, Mill Pond Park shortly after the fishing derby. And uh, I can get the best words to describe Mill Pond now is uh, idyllic. I mean, it was, I mean, really, it, it's, it's nice that I've ever seen it. You know, I've lived in this town for 33 years, and I think it's just a fantastic. We went there shortly after the fishing derby. There were still a lot of people there. Um, you know, weeks later, we were just walking around the park, a lot of people fishing. People was having a good time. It was great to see people there. The uh, park is just really, really well maintained in the town. Uh, when we looked at it a couple of years ago, the you know, gardens along the edge, we, we didn't find any garbage uh, at, at all. And uh, and, and uh, just uh, just everything grown in pace. More flowers or shrubbery, I mean, flowers kind of place yeah. along the edge. Yeah. It just looks, just looks, uh, just looks beautiful. The, uh, I don't know, have you seen the Boy Scout kiosk there? Yeah, yeah very well designed. Very well done. It adds to the park. It's you know, just very, very nice. Um, we, we did have a couple of things we think could be improved very quickly. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned this before. The fisherman's shed, just, just it's an eyesore. You know, you go past it like this, you know, and now it's, it's, it's much, much nicer than, than, than it used to be. Um, uh, but just a couple of, of, of uh, suggestions. Some of the, the benches are falling off, you know, starting to fall forward on the fishing shed, and maybe those benches could be, uh, you know, repaired or supported better. Uh, one thing I'd like to do, if it's possible, is, is to maybe uh, challenge the uh, Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts in town or other groups of young people to still have some creative juice. To maybe come up with some ideas of how we can really use that fishing shed more and make it you know really much, much uh, not, you know, nicer than it is now. So it's pretty good. Another thing is Francesca, I hope maybe we can go to Francesca. It's really your idea. I don't want to steal this. That's okay. But is to put some benches or chairs at the very, very serene, lovely spot in the northeast corner. Uh, there's nothing there now except, of course, trees and water and everything, but uh, it'd be a great place you know, to sit, contemplate, read, et cetera. And we're just wondering if, if that might be possible, so they get benches or chairs there. They wouldn't strip it off from over there, at least. Right? Yeah, they, they would. And quite <laughs> often, if we do think that things are going to move, we, we anchor them down one way or another. Um, so the park, same thing, the look park at is an it. A, even with this stuff, the park is an A plus. Yeah. No, the, the biggest issue we've had lately on benches and things like that is supply chain issues. We've had we had an order in for a picnic table, a metal picnic table, a year and a half. Wow. And you know, it's just so we're looking at different vendors. We we like to keep everything standard. So when there's repairs and everything, but it's just it's been tough. So has that been considered for the uh um, bench for just sitting down and observing on that side of the lake? We haven't. No, we haven't. It's, it's a perfect, yeah, it's a it, perfect it spot. Be. We also, don't forget, we have a bench policy where we accept donations. That's right. So it's right. a perfect place for a nice wooden bench over there. I guess maybe the artists from the 
benchmark proposal or oh. like a service date. Yeah, that's great. Not, uh, well, it sounds like it's so aesthetic now. That one's out. Know if yeah. the water would be, uh, or not. But... John, not, is there something special about these benches that this is supply chain and you go to Amazon or a hardware store? Like that? We refuse to buy Amazon type benches mainly because we get all different benches around, there's no repairs, and there's not the quality. We need something that, that's industrial. You know, go down to like Mead Park, the pool, Kiwanis, they hold up. But Kiwanis, they have, I'm sorry, Mead Park, they have, I guess you call them industrial. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't get those from Amazon or? No, no. You know, they're, they're, they're coming from a specific vendor. You may be to buy them through Amazon, but we're just not getting the deliveries. John, how much do they cost? Is it bench? And what, our, our wooden benches right now are $1,600 for the domain. It's a lot of money, but the prices have gone up from 1200 and some 54 go to 15. A really nice job on that part, too. It's, it, it's a lovely guy. All cleaned up. It, it's it's lovely, guys. Yeah. Any questions for Jessica? Thank you for the excellent report of the idea of benches that is just great. Okay, so moving on to the 4th of July. Uh, John, you want to give any updates there? I, a, I can certainly chime in, but we're ready. I was just looking through my notes. I was looking for how many passes we sold, and I don't have it. Uh, <laughs> pass sales are going well, though. Yeah, right. You know, still can purchase them online, and, and me and Debbie take care of mailing them out to you very quickly. You can, of course, come into the rec department. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to Walton Stewart's and um, even in town hall to the town clerk. But we only sold two there, so uh, <laughs> that isn't that. But if you if you see one of the posters, which is that type of thing, you can click on the um, QR the QR code, and it will take you right to the online purchase. And up until I believe the twenty third, if I have right. a date right, um, we'll mail to it. It'll happen. Okay. Sales are going well. Where the firework contracts have been signed, um, we don't see a problem, and we're all hoping for. Yeah. That they go off on the Saturday. When the, when the, rain, the, rain day, the first rain day is the Sunday, the second, second and then the, the second rain day is the eighth, the following Saturday. If it doesn't happen, then we'll go into the same mode that we were before, where we won't have. You can spread amongst your friends and neighbors of uh, the dates because a lot of people may think it's the fourth of July still. Uh, now that really, really in full summer mode, that it's going to be the Saturday the first, rain day the second. You know, alternative date would be the eighth, but we're really hoping and praying for Saturday the first. And the more we can kind of spread that word, we're going to start to get a lot of email blasts out as well, just so people can plan accordingly. And great thanks to John and Tom Stadler for you know organizing this event. They do ninety percent of the work. And yep, we got a got a vision. A lot of food trucks coming. Uh, you know, looking forward to it. It's always a good year, good time. Will you have the change box for the exchange club, guys? Yes. Perfect. Okay, that was a <laughs> question. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for John or myself on this? Then, uh, John, you're next. I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, I think we'll start with park maintenance. You, you might notice, um, but you probably wouldn't, over by the high school and some of the trails in that area, um, there's going to be a couple spotted lanternfly tracks. It's a high school mm -hmm. project. Um, they're just trying to see if there's any spotted lander flies around. They're they're not they're not doing any treatment or anything else like that. They're just trying to see if they're there. Um, so park maintenance, you know, graduation went off today. The weather held out at least for the morning graduation. They they started 15 minutes earlier to make sure they could get it in before any rain came. So you know, sure, I know I'm happy about that, Ryan's. Probably very happy about that. Right. Too. And now we can move right on to the Fourth of July field mowing and everything like that. Um, so they've been working on that a lot. Of course, baseball and softball. Most of the programs are kind of coming winding down that way. Um, and then we, we received a lot of approvals from the board of selectmen last week. So Brian came up with a plan to replace four of our water fountains. Um, with what's known as bottle fillers, jug fillers, whatever, container fillers. Um, we have some problems with some handicapped accessible fountains. It's very hard to have a, hand, a true handicapped accessible fountain. Mm -hmm. 
So we're, that's why we're going with just the, the bottle fillers, jump fillers, because they meet the requirements. You know how to square in your um, We're going to replace the one at the dog park. Okay. Um, one at each end, two of them at the water tower turf fields. Okay. okay. Those are almost 20 years old, the ones that are there. One is beyond repair. So, and then one at the big baseball field at Mead Park. Okay. Great. But not the one that is um, in the pathway going to the um, children's PlayStation. We're not replacing that one yet. Okay. So, so that one's going to be there, and this is additional. These, well, there's one down by the big baseball field. Okay. That one is that one is probably 40 years old. It's a steel pipe coming out of the ground. A little faucet on that. So uh, we also received. Received approval to purchase a robotic paint machine that we'll use for laying out fields. Uh, a 16 foot mower, the two awnings, both for the pool and Mead Park, um, some playground repairs to keep uh, me, Dixon, and Kiwanis up to standards. Um, and then um, Ryan and Todd have been working on Mead backstop. We're going to have all the fabric that's on that. And that's green right now, it's painted green and it's basically in disrepair. The metal framework's in great shape, but we're gonna have, um, probably in July, August, they're gonna peel off all the old fabric that will be disposed of, prep and paint the backstop framework and put up new black fabric, which won't stand out quite as much. So that's gonna happen. So, um, as everybody knows, the water, our air quality issues, um, we're going to take that on a day-to-day -day basis. It worries us about our summer camps because the answer is to go inside. And of course, Waveney is our rain day location, Waveney House, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have air conditioning, so that doesn't help us much. So we're talking with the schools to see about possible locations. This keeps going. Mm -hmm. okay. um, summer camp starts on Monday. Pretty new and exciting. We've increased, we've, well, we've increased the day length. Um, put it back to what it was. We've also added 40 extra campers, so it's 100 campers per session. Um, we've got a new location, which is going to be basically over this way, the other side of the of the house. Um, and there's a staff meeting uh, tomorrow, and looking forward to starting on Monday. Steve Banco Pool. The only thing that wasn't mentioned is we made temperature. You know, it was cold for opening week, but Steve had the heaters running. We, we did burn a little bit of propane, but we got it up to temperature for the first weekend. So I didn't get any complaints about it being too cold. <laughs> so, what, what is the temperature? We try, to, we try to get to 78. Oh, God. In 79. Yeah. <laughs> These cold nights are, are tough. Did you talk to <clears> 60, <throat> 67 degrees now? And are you using it much? No. <laughs> 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 I'm going to buy a gas. <laughs> there you go. So, but so that's that's going well, and of course, Kiwanis is opening up this weekend. Um, swim lessons. This year, we partnered with the YMCA, and we have 143 people signed up to take swim lessons. It's great. Uh, okay. So, Board of Selectmen, just so you know, authorized the carriage barn to do their art fair and be able to sell art for the one day, October 1st. Good. Uh, rockets and ice cream went off without a hitch. Uh, and they were very happy. They had fewer launches than before, uh, but it was the greatest event they've had so far. This is coming from them. So. Um, they cleaned up very well afterwards. We wouldn't have known they were there. So. That's all I've got. Unless anybody has any questions. Questions for John? John, the past year we've had some staffing problems trying to, you know, getting people to like guards of the Quantas and, and, you know, and, 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 and. I'll always worry about it. Steve done, has done a great job. You know, um, I, we're, we're presently. We have enough lifeguards. We don't have a problem. The end of the season is where we really worry. All of a sudden, the kids want to go back to college a week early, that type of thing. But right now, we're in good shape that way. Um, we did have, we had, you know, we did have people not show up for interviews for summer camp for camp counselors, but we were a little bit late, so some of the people went and found other jobs. Mm -hmm. But we're fully staffed there too, so we're, 
right now we're good. Um, just one thing about uh, when we were at New Park and we were talking about racket sports, I just want to mention before the budget year ends so that we can be sure it's in the request. Uh, enough cocaine to be able to put the heaters on at the pad of tennis courts when it rains for liability and danger reasons. Okay. The only issue, I, I can understand what you're saying, the only issue is our budget's already been approved which starts July 1st through the winter. So we'll, we'll do everything we can. Okay. But we are we are limited now. And I know you heard And it depends on the weather. Pros and yeah. It yep. wasn't just me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep. Can I just make a comment on the heaters? They're only really supposed to be used for ice, not supposed to be used for rain. They're so used for rain and all the other. That's because they're country clubs. No, uh, Wheat Beach does it, and that's not a country club. That's Darien's um, Parks and Rec. And they're not the only one around that does it. We'll look okay. Into it. okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Any questions for John? Okay, uh, move on to uh, my report. Just two quick things. Uh, first, we do have a report placement for Carl Mason, who left the commission at the beginning of the year. Board of Selectmen um, uh, uh, voted Lindsay Heron. I will contact her. She has to be sworn in by the clerk, and then she can join our, our group in July. Um, and I, I, I well, or I think it should be a great addition. Um, our next meeting is on July 12th. And then we will not be meeting in August. Okay. So, are there any questions or anything, Betty? <laughs> Public comments, please. Sure. Um, Betty Lavastic, Old New World Road. I have about eight little scribble notes that I was taking down. Um, I'm glad somebody brought up the issue of brush. Uh, Kiwanis Park. I'm five feet tall. There are sections where the brush is as tall as I am. Um, the Moreno tree, the bottom of it is, it really needs trimming. I, I John. Yeah, and underneath it, there's weeds growing very high. Also, I noticed from last year when the parents of the uh, Qantas camp pickups, they drove and parked underneath the Moreno tree, also along the island. So there are pavers that have sort of separated. So I know they definitely were parked underneath the Moreno tree and along the islands. So I would just suggest checking the uh, pavers there because that could be an issue if somebody trips on it. Um, I'm not done on this. Um, the uh, Kentucky yellowwood trees are the 10 trees that are in the islands. They're supposed to be pruned in the first year. They have never been pruned. And they do look nice, but quite a few of them are overgrown. And one of them has a branch that I tagged that's broken on it, so that would need trimming. Um, I just wanted to follow up. Number two are the umbrellas that we discussed in December for the tables. Yes, we haven't opened yet, so they'll be out before we open. Terrific, and they yep. will work. They're all brand new. Thank you very so, much. You know, they they work day one. They're still in the box. So. <laughs> in the box. Yeah. Thank you very much. And the patio, I don't know what it looks like today with the downpour that we have, but there's a history of it. You know it, Tiger knows it. Whenever it rains, underneath the patio, the sand sort of shifts and then the pavers become loose. Has that been addressed? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, number four is Iman, and I know he has the concession stand. And if I recall correctly, last month he said he had uh, a full staff. So there was a food truck that was used on Tuesdays. And that person came to me and asked if he could come to Kwanis. He's an LLC, and I also have an ice cream truck that's LLC and got cleared and would like to come to Kwanis. Well, they, they got cleared by the health department, which is different. All right, because when we spoke last year and I was looking, we, we you need, said they need LLCs and they well, have no, they need they need all their certification and all that. And they yeah. said they had everything so right, but then they, then we still is selling in the park. So we have to get special approval for it. 
And as I told you, have them contact me. So All right, because he worked in, in the pool. He worked at the pool, and yeah. we, got, we got approval for that. Okay. And I said, if you were talking to him, tell him to contact me if he's interested. Okay, so I have two I, I, I've heard from either one of them. Okay, but you know who it is? The taco yeah. place? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, um, I don't know the procedure for doing this, but I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. This is a picture of when we go to the website, it's called the Town of New Canaan Government Calendar. And you could look for the whole month and you could go a couple months in advance and back. And most people go and they look at the whole month to see what kind of meetings are going on. Last month and this month also, when we go to today's meeting and click on it, the only thing that displays is the date. There's no Zoom link and there's no agenda. So for me to get today's agenda and the Zoom link, I had to go into the Park and Rec Commission website and go through this. I discussed this with Tucker. You know, it's happened in the past, not just with Park and Rec, but planning and zoning and other meetings. And there should be a way that when you notify whoever you notify of agendas and Zoom, it should go to the monthly calendar and also to the appropriate commission, board, and so forth. So I don't know whose responsibility know that is. I but this sure. should we start with Pam Flynn? Because when I send out the agenda, um, Pam is on it, Tucker, you're something you know, usually. Then Pan normally sends us the Zoom link. Right. She has to, she has to set up the Zoom link yeah, for the Zoom link. Perhaps she would be the person to say, maybe send it to whoever is our website yeah. master. I can say I, I don't know offhand. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know, how know how it gets to the calendar part of it. But we um, can definitely you want me to take a website to but, but, you know, this has been a problem, not just this year, not just this commission. Right. It's been ongoing for a couple of years where there are critical meetings and people who are interested don't find out until a half hour before meeting. Right. And like today at 6.30, it still hasn't been loaded for this meeting. John, um, I'll contact Pam Flynn mm -hmm. and say in the future when it's going to be there. It hasn't been on the website. We can do that. I'll see if you talk her on it. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to uh, just speak of it to the board of selectmen because I can't go to every single board and commission and say this is a problem on it. And I think if it goes to the board of selectmen as an issue and its transparency, that it could be addressed on all the boards and commissions. It seems as if some of the boards and commissions consistently have it there and you could find it in both places. So I don't know if it's how they are sending the information. Call on those boards and ask them. Uh, well, they do. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. That's my homework. Um, and then one thing I did want to bring um, the attention to, I went on the website for Kiwanis, the beach, and the fees for the beach are still not correct on the website um, for it. So what, I would. What's it showing? Uh, it's showing $25 for family and individual as opposed to 15 it shows out of town as 115 instead of 75. And I don't know if this was voted on, but seniors are um, free, but it shows as non-resident seniors to be free. And I don't think that was discussed. No, I, without looking at it, I, yeah, I, I, I don't even no, want but to I, I'm saying, I'm not sure uh, what I, you're I, looking at. I, I, we've, had, we've had some issues because when you go to sign up for a program, I that, it tech, that takes you to it takes you to a different section, you know. But I have of, it here basically you. out of the town website. Right. There's still some old information. Like there was, we had we received a call about Juanis Beach. How come it didn't open on the 11th? Well, and that was an old section. This is couldn't even right. find that was 2022. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the date it did open. Yeah. 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 So this so, this is you. It's Betty did it. Did it mention that if you have a uh, Steve Medical Pool Pass that allows you to use Kiwanis. Does it mention it? I don't know because I'm looking as it should say it on there, but I don't know. Yeah, uh, that should be mentioned. That's it says it, I believe it says it on 
pulled them though, not right. the corners. Yeah. Right. Because you can't be pulled the corner. It's only relevant as it depends. Well, I, I don't know. If I were thinking about buying a Kiwanis pass and I found, ooh, if I get a full pass, I'll also get the Kiwanis pass, then I, I buy the full pass and maybe skip buying the Kiwanis pass. Of course, but nobody reads it. <laughs> and so we do have people who buy both. Yeah. Oh, but it clearly to, says, right? exactly, it clearly says on the full pass in yeah. row that it includes use of one. Yeah, okay. Three more quick items. Um, there is a down tree or somewhat down tree. I sent a copy to you. I sent it to Tiger. Tiger answered you back. With yeah. The minutes, yeah. And then he had the tree warden taken care of it. It still is there. Okay. But but the tree warden is in charge of the trees. Okay. So, uh, but if the camp opens on Monday, the tree camp, is still there. Camp opens next month. Okay. Right. So another week. Like oh, a week, week after Monday. Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Our that's camp different. Opens, okay. Camp. Thank you. And um, staff parking for the Y, I don't think this was ever discussed here. The staff in, in the past has parked where we keep the lifeguards and around the pavilion has always been for residents to park and handicapped to park. And what has happened over the past two years with change of who runs the <clears> camp <throat> is that the camp directors are parking opposite the Girl Scout cabin. And this <laughs> makes other people, the residents, have to park in the backfield. So is there a way? I think it's in the contract that they're not supposed to park there. But the, ca but the, um, the camp counselors <laughs> would not read that. They don't read that level of the contract. So is there a way that we could bring that to their attention? That's the parking spot. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. The, the, the parking lot that had the paved parking lot, the one reason why it had to be striped is because of handicap parking. Right, right. So that's been done. Uh, so uh, and that is not doesn't fall on me or the commission if somebody illegally parks in the handicap spot. That's right, right, right. And finally, uh, security in Waveney, and not just Waveney, but all of the parks with the smashing grab lately. Has anything been done to mm -hmm. increase the plate readers or lights and security in the parks? Um, my that comment you know of? Has, has to be that that is handled by the Board of Selectmen and they go into executive session. I know some things that have been done, but it's not for public information okay. since it's a security issue. Okay. Well, right. Thank you very much. Betty, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Are any other public comments? Yes, sir. No. Okay. Um, guys, thank you. Uh, is there any other questions, topics that you'd like to run, uh, raise? Is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> Second? Anybody else? All those approved? Favor? Great. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, just a quick question for you. Oh,